Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Eddie Marcus here again. I'm back at it. I'm back at it because I gotta be back at it. Because you are special. We as human beings are special. You know, there is a movie. I think most of us kind of got that movie set in our heads. And it's about hell. And you know, in hell, they got this figure. Sometimes it makes them look like a monster. Well, it can change to various types of monsters. Horns, sometimes a forked tongue, forked tail, and a lot of violence and pain and suffering going on thereabouts. And sometimes they make it seem as though there are flames about and a place you just definitely do not want to find yourself in. That's the TV version of hell. Now, there's a real life version of hell. And where that takes place is where people have found situations so difficult. Sometimes it has to do with being abused. Sometimes it has to do with being raped. Sometimes it has to do with being enslaved that people find themselves running for rescue, running for some type of refuge. And this to them is pure hell to have their kids taken away from them and sold into some form of slavery or trafficking in humans, anything just to get over. Then there's this form of hell where there are people who are living their lives and someone comes over and wants to disrupt that life and take what that uh, life has for others. They want to take it for themselves. They want the people to recapitulate and give up all of whatever they claimed and give the authority to another image, another power. And if you don't, then bombs fall. Buildings are destroyed. Babies in hospitals and old folks and children are mangled and burned up. Oh, this is a different type of hell. This is a real hell that we as human beings get a chance to experience. It is pill hell, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sure every last one of us that are not in that environment are thankful to God that we're not in it. But that's not good enough. You see, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. It's about this righteousness that I keep telling you about that will free us. I remember when I was a child going to school, there were always bullies. Believe me, you, there are always bullies. Tell me, I don't know why. But a bully will always choose who they want to attack. They want to attack weakness or what they perceive as being weakness. And there were oftentimes I would find myself in fights, not because people would jump on me or want to beat me up. I mean, that might have happened a couple of times, but it didn't end well for the others. But to want a, a man, a boy, want to jump on a girl. that was I was taught that that was wrong. Boys don't fight girls. And so if you were going to fight a girl around me, you weren't going to fight me. You weren't going to fight that girl. I don't care how big you were. I don't care what, you're not going to do it. And if there was a bully around wanted to fight a guy that didn't want to fight for, for any reason, maybe because he was scared, maybe he knew he couldn't win. And so he maybe just didn't want to fight. But you want to impose yourself on a, somebody like that? Not around me. You're going to have a fight. It's going to be me. And I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, I never lost a fight because I was right. But there was one fight I did lose in my life. It was a fight I started. I started it trying to impress a woman. I was a teenager. I wanted to impress a woman. And I'm going to force a guy much bigger than me to fight me in front of this woman. And he beat the crap out of me. <laughs> so I'm telling you. I'm telling you. All you need is right on your side. I know every man it, you're boiling over, you're burning over seeing what's going on in Ukraine. I know you are. 
You want to do something, but you don't know what to do. So you're leaving it up to your government to take care of it. And your government is trying to protect you without going all the way. And the refusal to go all the way indicates weakness. And that form of weakness will keep you in a position of defeat every stinking time. You know, everybody in the world know that it would be right to stop Putin. It would be right. Everybody in the world knows it. Every preacher knows it. Everybody that goes to church knows it. But you know what? The devil is doing his thing in Ukraine. And the Ukrainian people are saying, where is the God that I've heard about all my life? Where is God? They're on their knees crying. God, God help us. And what is God doing? What the devil says is okay. Send them this. Send them that. This will help them. The devil says that this is okay. They say, we need this. This is what would help us. But then the people of the world say, we can't do that because that might seem like we are trying to attack the devil. And we don't want to go and do that because he might come back on us. It might cost us something. That's the way I see it. As spokesman and advocate of basic human rights, that's the way I see it. To me, it is the duty and the responsibility of the, not just America. It is the duty and the responsibility of every human being on the face of it to tell Trump, to tell Putin, to set his ass now. And everybody else who walking around here like Donald Trump, tell him to sit their butts down too. This stuff ain't going nowhere. Because we're going to protect one another. I say it, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to protect one another. We are not the ones who made the decision to split the nations up. <clears throat> we are not the ones that made the decisions of who gets what and who gets this and how we're going to do it. We didn't make those decisions. We left them in the hands of people that we thought were responsible people, people who would look out for our interests. And now we find out these people don't give a stank about us, and we know they don't give a stank about us. Because when we stand up and protest, they send cops out in the street, they beat us with billy clubs, they kick us, they hit us with mace, they do all kinds of stuff to us. They drag us and throw us in jail, and then they take us out. In some places, they just cut our hands off. Some places, they cut our heads off. Sometimes, they just shoot us down. Sometimes, they put us in prison and lock the keys up. They do everything to us, and that tells us they don't give a stank about us. And those people that are not in jails and prisons and stuff, they are the ones that are just going along with it, and that's all they need. That's all the power that be. That's all evil needs is for people to go along with it. And the ones that don't go along with it, they got to go through all this kind of stuff rather than fix it. Righteousness requires that it is fixed. And if you don't fix it, you're going to have wars. You're going to have racism and hatred and bigotry because you won't fix it. You won't have poverty, crime, and violence because you won't fix it. You act like you don't know what it is. You don't want it to happen to you. That tells you. And you got no business existing. But you don't cause no violence. You do what the underlying principle requires. You cut out the cancer. You don't treat it. You cut it out. And if any violence involved, you let God take care of that. We don't want our hands on no violence. When it comes down to going on taking care of Russia, that is not an individual demand. That is a world demand. That's the people speaking. And it is not to kill Russia or destroy Russia. It is to let Russia know that in order for Russia to do the damage to Ukraine that it's trying to do, it's going to have to do it to all of us. That's what you're going to have to do. And with self-defense, we're ready to go for it. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. I want to leave it there. You've got a zest of what I'm talking about to you this day. I want to thank you so very much. I don't mean no harm. I'm just trying to tell you the truth as I see it. That was my duty. That was my responsibility to see it in the way that I've been given to see it. And then be bold enough to stand up and tell you how I see it. And tell you, if I have the opportunity, why I see it 
as opposed to seeing what you have been doing. <laughs> That's pretty good. And I'm looking forward to it. Come on. Talk to you later. Goodbye.